Welcome to part two. Whether you're following on from part one straight away or you've had a small break in between, thanks for coming back and hopefully you're enjoying the process of building the site so far. So if you followed along with part one, you should have the beginnings of your website made with some of your content in it. If you're looking for a really simple website with just information you've added and you're happy with the choices you made in presets at the start, you could actually stop right here and skip straight to part four, add a public host and go live. But if you wanna learn more about customizing your site and displaying your content in different ways, stick with me and let's carry on building. This template is really powerful because you can use it to make some completely different looking sites just by changing a few settings. But before we get to that, let's look at how we can organize the website. The next thing we're gonna look at is the gallery page. Now I mentioned in part one that pages are linked to sets. You can see on the website screen that some sets have been created for this website. They're named in a fairly self-explanatory way, the splash, which is the splash page set, gallery, which is the main gallery, contact, which is the images on the contact page, and assets where things like logos will go. The images I've uploaded to the gallery live in this gallery set, and that's where I add to them if I want to upload more now. If I click on gallery, it'll take us right to the gallery set and we can see those images I uploaded earlier. You can also go to the images tab in the main navigation, click on sets, and you can see that there's now a website set. Inside, I'll find the set for my new site and inside it are all those same sets I just showed you. You can see at the top, there's a file path showing the nested set. So you can follow that back as a sort of breadcrumb trail if you get lost at any point. And if I go back over to upload again, now I can see all these same sets here. If I upload another image to the gallery set, it will show up in the gallery on the website straight away. Simple, right? So that sets. Now, if you have a very well curated selection of images, you might only need one page with one set on it. But if you have a bigger catalogue of work, you'll probably want to organise your work in some way on the site. You can do that using sets and using pages. Let's go back to the gallery set. What we can do is break up this gallery set into several sets and split these photos between them so visitors have a bit more clarity about what's going on. In the side panel, open the new set panel and give your set a name, say travel. And you can give this a color if you want to make it easier to spot for yourself and click create. Let's make another set called fashion and make it purple. So now we have two sets which are empty inside this gallery set. Images can belong to multiple sets. So that means the same photo can be in the splash page and in this gallery. You don't have to duplicate them. They can exist in both sets at once. They can also be added to multiple websites. So if, for example, you make a DPG client area, after a shoot, you can upload your images there, deliver them to the client, and then at a later date, maybe months down the line when the project is out, add just a few of those images to your portfolio. You only need to upload the original image once, which makes it really simple to keep track of things in the system. So following that logic, now we want to put these images into these new sets and take them out of the main gallery set, otherwise they'd be in both places at once. Select each image by ticking the selection box. You can also hold down shift and click at the start and end to make a selection of all the images in between. Open the add to set panel and find the new fashion set and click add. Because these are already on the website, this will happen really quickly. They shared the same website versions already. Now let's unselect these and select the others and add them to the travel set. If we refresh the page, we'll see five in travel and four in fashion. So we can now select all of these and remove them from the set using the remove panel. That's only removing them from this gallery set. They'll still be in the new nested travel and fashion sets. And remove doesn't mean delete. Even if you remove an image from all sets, then the image is still in DPG. Now you can see we have the fashion set and the travel set. Let's go back to the website and see how that looks on the web. So the splash page is the same, but now on the click through, we have two sets. So straight away, you can see how you can use sets to organize your page into different projects or by different types of work. You can keep nesting sets inside each other for as many layers as you like. There's no limit on the DPG side at all, but obviously just be mindful of your visitors and how much clicking they'll have to do. But you can, for example, have a set called weddings with sets for different weddings inside and then each one of those having sets inside for, say, reception, ceremony and after party. So that's a good way of organising large and busy galleries into an easy to digest structure. This is also a good example of the hierarchy of this gallery page. I think of it as having three tiers to it, the sets view, the index view and the single view. Each set here will share the same layout and style properties, so this works if you want all of the categories of your work to look the same. 
But what if you have different styles of work or want to display galleries in different ways? What we can do is make more gallery pages. The style settings you apply will affect each individual page, so you can have pages which present your work in different ways. Say you have some images that would look better presented in a simple scrolling column with large images and some other work which you maybe want to show in a small square grid of thumbnails which opens into a light box. You can do that by creating different pages and applying different layouts to those pages. This might sound complicated, but let's see it in practice and you'll see it's super easy. On the website screen, go to pages. Here you can see all the pages we have for this website. We'll come back to this, but for now, scroll down to the bottom and click create. I'm going to call my page portfolio. When I click on path, it'll automatically fill in based on the title. That's the part that will show in the URL of the site. I can edit that to be something different, but it should all be lowercase and without any spaces. Then I can choose from the different page types available. I'm going to choose media gallery, which is the same page type as the existing gallery. So we're just making another one of those. In the advanced options, I can choose not to add it to the navigation. This is useful if you're working on a new page, but you don't want to make it visible in the navigation for the moment. But this site isn't public yet, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And then click OK and the page will be created. We can now see the portfolio page here and there's a portfolio set to go with it. I'm going to upload some more of my images into this portfolio set. While images are uploading, you can work on something else in your DPG account or in the websites area. Obviously, just make sure not to close the tab or let your computer go to sleep. If I click on one of these once it's uploaded, I think I want to add some more information to this gallery. So I'm going to go through and enter some titles and descriptions to these images. To do that, open the information panel, type in a title and description, and click update. Then I think I'll also add a description to the set itself to give a bit more context about what this is all about. If I go to the set view, the set information panel is where I can add a description. Let's go and have a look at it on the website. In the navigation, there's a new item linking to portfolio. And here are my images in the gallery. As you can see, the two gallery pages look the same for the moment. They're both regular grid, which has them in these three columns in the original aspect ratio with some nice white space around it. I think for this gallery though, I want something a little more simple. So I'm gonna change the design of this layout. This is really a sneak preview of part three where we'd be looking at design in much more detail. But what I want to show you is how different pages can have different properties. So you can keep that in mind when you're planning how to organize your content. From the website screen, click the edit design icon. Up here, I'm going to select the portfolio page and then I'm going to go to page and components in the side panel. There's an option here called gallery index view where I can click through and choose a different style for this gallery page. I'm going to go with stream. If I head to the original gallery page, we can see it's in regular grid still. We'll go into much more detail about all of this design stuff later on. But what I'm showing you here is that with different pages, it's possible to have different layouts. So broadly speaking, if you want all the gallery sections on your site to look the same, go with sets to organize. And if you want them to be different, go with pages. It's helpful to take a bit of time to think about how you're going to organize your work. How do you want to present it and what's the best way for visitors to explore your site? Do your images stand alone or are they more of a story or a continuing narrative? Do you have a lot of text and information that you want to display alongside each one? Or are you more about going image first without any distractions? While we're here talking about pages, let's head back over to the pages tab. Here you can see all of the pages on your site. And one that needs our attention now is the contact page. Click the edit button and you'll see some options to manage the different elements of the site. In content, you can see the set it's linked to. So if you want to change up the images in this page, you can do that there. And then under text, I want to delete this stock text and replace it with some of my own text. The contact tab also has the email I added using the helper at the start. So that's all done. And we'll be looking at the design of this page later on. But maybe as well as a contact page, you want a text page without a form on it. This is good for all kinds of text heavy pages. Maybe if you have a longer biography or some other kind of informational page your site could benefit from, or if you want a more minimal look without the form, there are lots of uses that you might come up with for your specific site. 
To make a new page, I go to the Pages tab again and click the Create button. Fill in the title and path and then select text and media from the drop down and click OK. Once the page is created, I can click edit next to it and just at the contact page, you can see there's a content tab showing the linked set. What's different about this page is that it has multiple text boxes where I can put information and the design section has different layouts taking advantage of that. For now, I'm just going to replace the stock text with my own and click update to save that and then I'll add an image as well. Now that we have more pages, I think I want to change the order of them in the navigation here. On the website screen, I can go to content and main navigation, and I can drag the navigation items into order and also add, remove, and change them. For example, I have a blog that I want to link in this navigation. So I just click the create button, and in this menu, I can see all the existing pages that I can add to the navigation. If I choose standard, that allows me to link to external sites. That's anything that isn't part of this website. It could be another DPG site or something else on the web. And I can choose if it should open in a new window as well. Another thing I'm going to do while I'm here in the content tab is add some social links. Click the create button here and enter the full website address in the box. I'll add those for a few different services I use and those will appear as icons on the website. In these other content tabs, I can see some of the information I've entered using the helper, like the header and the tagline, and also some of the information I can see on the page, like the copyright area and the footer. You can edit these or add more information, so things like contact details in the footer or a short piece of text that appears in the overlay navigation, but I'm quite happy with what I have so far. Before I move on to the next part, I'm going to spend a little more time just repeating what I've shown you in this part to add some more galleries, upload more images, and just flesh out my site a bit by adding more content. That will prepare me for part three, where we'll be looking at design. So I'll see you there.